Friends, this is a hypermature Morganian cataract. Let us observe this surgery. This is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratom. This is a sideboard on the left side of the main incision. And now one more sideboard is being made on the right side of the main incision. The sideboards are about two and a half to three o'clock hours away from the main incision. And now this is an air bubble to fill off the anterior chamber. Underneath this air bubble tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. The dye is then washed out and within few seconds there is fair staining of the anterior capsule. Now 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is injected to fill up the anterior chamber. And now capsulorexis. As the anterior capsule is punctured milky fluid comes out which indicates this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract. Read a small erexis. At this time I could make out genular witness. So my next plan is to apply a CTR after erexis. The milky fluid is aspirated. This is a 23 gauze Simcoe cannula. The antechamber is again filled off with 2% SPMC. And now a Vana scissor is taken and a small cut is made at around nine o'clock. Now I use the Utrita forceps to do a medium sized rexis. Size of this rexis is about 4.5 to 4.75 millimeter. I don't want to do a large rexus because the genule is weak and if the capsular tag goes into the genule it will not be possible to bring it back. However this is a very small rexus. Size of this rexus is about three millimeter. So I have to enlarge it. I'm making a side port at around four o'clock. And now I take the Vana scissor again. With the help of the Vana scissor, another cut is made at 12 o'clock. And now I take the utrata again, hold this tag and very gently enlarge the rexis to about 4.75 millimeter. I'm planning to apply a CTR so the Rex is it is better if it is kept just below 5 millimeter. Of course nucleus management will be a bit difficult with the small Rexis. Pisco is again filled off. Pisco from the ocular surface is washed away 
and now is the time to apply a capsular tension ring that is a CTR in my opinion the CTR should be applied before nucleus management because the FACO proof will push the nucleus, will crack the nucleus and all these maneuvers will cause genular stress. So it is always better to support the equator of the capsular bag as early as possible. The leading end goes in and now the leading end is not entering into the capsular bag. What to do then? I take a Sinsky hook and sub guide the leading end to go behind the anterior capsular rim. That is, it goes into the equator of the capsular bag. And now with the help of this two instrument it is guided to go into the capsular bag. This is a Sinsky hook. The Sinsky hook takes the tailing end into the capsular bag and then it releases it there. So now the capsular bag is nicely supported. And now how to manage this free floating nucleus? I'm going to use Oatly Cataryx 3 FICO machine in this case. The FECO needle goes into the anterior chamber with its bevel down and in this position it goes into the substance of the nucleus almost up to the central part and thus a tunnel has been made. Now I turn the handpiece make the bevel up and now the probe will go through this tunnel into the substance of the nucleus and then we can divide the nucleus in this way. Unless we make the initial tunnel with bevel down it is very difficult to engage into the nucleus And now the nucleus has been divided completely into two halves. This is a very hard nucleus. Ultrasonic energy is 80% in continuous mode. Flow rate is 45 ml per minute. And vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. Now I have one more plan. I want to remove half of the nucleus then apply the intraocular lens. The one heminucleus is protecting the capsular bag. It is keeping the posterior capsule behind. It is not allowing the posterior capsule to come in front. But as I start emulsifying this heminucleus, the posterior capsule may get caught into the aspirating port of the FACO needle any time. So I inject visco, push this heminucleus down and implant this lens in the capsular bag. Yes, the lens has gone into the capsular bag 
and the fish has come out of the bag. Now I am going to emulsify this piece at the iris plane. The lens, intraocular lens is very thin. It is, it has gone, it is just above or in a position of the posterior capsule. So there is lot of space in the bag to emulsify this piece. But we must not touch the intraocular lens with the tip of the FECO needle. because the ultrasonic energy may cause some damage to the optic of the intraocular lens if the intraocular lens is touched by the tip of the FECO needle. And now the intraocular lens is nicely placed in the capsular bag and um, removing the cortical lens matter from the capsular bag. In this case, this is a hypermature Morgagnian cataract and there is very little, almost no cortex. However, there are small specks of cortex in some areas. It is being removed. So this is a very smart way of managing this kind of cases. First, make a tunnel in the substance of the nucleus with pebble down because if the tip of the FECO needle is towards the lens mass, it engages immediately. But if the bevel is up towards the cornea, it doesn't engage. Now this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. At this time any visco sticking to the corneal endothelium comes out. You can see that the intraocular lens is nicely centered in the bag. So this has been a very satisfactory surgery. The jonule is weak but still we have managed it nicely. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve the mankind with love, respect, compassion and great surgical competence.